This is the Bobcat 863 wheel loader, skid loader. And we're going to replace and repack a busted lift cylinder. Let's get into it. Been working on a job it's a pretty big job and we've run this machine to death and we've had a few little issues with it the loader I guess emergency brake it rained on us I guess it shorted out the foot brake on it and it locked the wheels up we couldn't get it to drive we thought it was a safety bar and we fiddled with that way too long it wasn't the safety bar it was the foot switch I think you can see it down there that orange lever this type loader you can push that orange lever up it's like an emergency brake it'll I guess lock the drive system up the loader arms will still work but the drive won't go we fooled that a little bit and finally got it to where it freed up then we got it loaded and we had to get it back home because we were spraying food everywhere out of this lift cylinder now this happened on a Saturday we needed it Sunday of course it rained Sunday and Monday so Today's Monday evening. It's finally cleared up a little bit, but it's going to storm again. We have got to get this repacked. I ordered the seals. It was going to be a week before I could get them, but I had to go a few towns over today where they've got a Bobcat dealer, and I stopped in there and picked up a seal repack kit. It just consists of a few little parts. Let's take a look at it. Here's a look at some of the parts we got today. They even sent us a little air freshener high quality I guess it stands for high quality motor service dot com got a telephone number on it and that was this little box here and it's uh, we've got a Dutes or Dutes I don't know how you call it engine and these are the ceiling rings for the injectors for some reason the other day one well, of the injector rings started leaking and I took it out and to see what it needed, ordered the part and put it back in. I, I sanded the bottom of that copper ring and it resealed. But then the little fingers that holds the injector broke. Let's take a look at that. This is the, I guess, German Dutz engine. Dutz, Dutz, I don't know what it's called. But um, it's a four-cylinder and it's turbocharged and it's oil-cooled. It has Instead of having a radiator, it has a oil cooler up here that cools all the motor oil. It holds a lot of oil that goes through here and cools the engine like water when it cools it with oil. It never gets over about 180 degrees. But you've got four injectors, and each of those injectors is held in place by this little little crow's foot thing here. And they all look good, but the one that blew the ring out, the reason it blew the ring out is not because the ring failed but because that little foot was broken in half. The top part was on the injector, the bottom part was under the boat, and there's a split in the middle. So what I done was I took it out and tacked one side of it, and then I ground out the split on the other side. It was really rusty, so it had been broken on one side for a long time. I ground it out, filled it back up a weld, and then reshaped it with a grinder, and then I ground out the side that I would tacked and filled it with weld. I made sure I got about a quarter of an inch of weld all the way through and then ground it back in shape and put it back in and it's holding right now. I've looked online, I can't find these crow's feet anywhere. I found something similar but I want to find someone that has some of these engines and just get a used one I guess. I could probably get on the German website and order them but I'm not exactly sure. They don't come with the injector but Apparently it's an item that fails, or at least it did on this one, so it must, needs to be something that's serviceable. Here's the part for the cylinder. 
80 bucks plus tax is nearly $100. You can find these on Amazon. They're around 36 bucks, but it takes two weeks to get it. And I needed it today. I've got one ordered from Amazon. And I've also got another one ordered from Bobcat, which the Bobcat may be here Wednesday. But there's not a whole lot of parts to this. This is your wiper. This is your inner ring with a spring, and it goes inside of your um, sleeve. A new nut with the Loctite in it. And this is for your, I guess this goes on your sleeve part. The nut that, I guess they call it a gland that holds it in. And this little ring right here is for your uh, piston, I think. Yeah, the wiper and the inner. One of these O-rings, oh, those two go together. That's for the um, for the gland, and this is for the uh, outside sealing edge of the gland, I believe. And that's just the gland. I think is the nut that holds it in to the cylinder. Now I've got to work on getting this off. I got to take a nine sixteenth bolt out and pull that pin. I'll probably strap it up with something, and then slowly let it down, and drain the oil out of it. I'm going to take it apart right on the machine. And I don't know if I'll put these ceiling rings in or not today because some people say they have a hard time getting them out, but I never had no trouble at all getting the fuel injector out. It just came right out, but it already, I guess it blew itself out. The reason it come out is easy that it broke. But I may say this for another day. Before I take this cylinder loose from the top up here, remove that 9 16 bolt and knock that pin out, I want it to be good and solid. So I've got to try to get this gland nut loose. And it has a place for a special tool that hooks on it and pulls it loose and it keeps you from scratching it. This has never been scratched. But I don't have that tool. It's on order, but it's untelling when it'll be here. So I'm going to try this Jimangus prior chin locks. And I'm going to put a rag over top of this aluminum nut, this aluminum, and try to get it loose without scratching it and damaging it. Uh, if I do, I do. I can't help it. I've got to get this done today. I'm going to give that a try. We'll come back and take a look at it. I may have to make a tool. I can always make something that'll go in there work like a gland nut wrench. Just need a couple of pins and something to spin it with. Actually, I think I've got something similar to it already. But uh, let me give it a try and I'll come back. Well, I gave up on changing the seals and the hydraulic cylinder myself. I left it attached to the machine and I used gl gland wrenches and pipe wrenches. I even made a homemade tool and it sheared the pins off of this side and I welded pins on this side and it destroyed them. It fit really good and worked good, had plenty of leverage. I just couldn't get a pin strong enough to not bend and destroy the cap. So the next thing I went to was a giant pipe wrench. And all it done was destroy the gland nut. So I took it to the hydraulic shop and he said I probably wouldn't be able to reuse the nut so I ordered one from Bobcat. And I was using these big long pry bars. And I was standing on this side. I was doing this, doing the cylinder on the other side, but I stand on this side pulling on it. And it slipped. And this big pipe caught my head and just about knocked me out. Split the whole top of my scalp open. It bled. I got up off the ground. I was bleeding. I thought I was dead. I bled everywhere, bled all through the house. Well, a little head wound will make you bleed really bad. So I just gave up and took it to the hydraulic shop. So I think I'm going to, uh, I gotta make some change and shorten them up. I gotta work on that backhoe too at some point. But I got my lines capped off. He's gonna call me in a day or two and I gotta take that gland nut to him when it comes in. So meanwhile, I've got a job that needs to be finished. 
I got in a hurry and that's what caused all this to happen in the first place. So I'm just going to rent a machine, finish up what work I need to do, and then postpone all my other work until I get my machine back going. It's got a few little issues. I can't do nothing with the backhoe. It's got a some kind of bypass blown inside of the control. And when you lift this foot pad up, somehow it makes the boom go up. So there's definitely some kind of issue inside the control. They they rebuilt it just last year at the hydraulic shop, and now it's leaking like crazy. And and the swing is fast, so fast it'll kill somebody. It swings left and right, but the down boom control you have to put two hands on it and force it to get it to just barely move. So it's it's kind of dangerous. So I'm gonna get them to probably put new new seals in that and redo it, or I may have to just have a whole new control because. Yeah, something ain't right. Let's get to work on cutting some chains up. What we got here is a long piece of... I wasn't sure what size chain this is, but it's 5 sixteenths, I believe. And I need two short pieces so I can... Whenever I haul my backhoe and my buckets, I have to have some kind of chain to lift my buckets off the trailer with the backhoe. And I need two short pieces. I've got this one here that's about 20 foot long and I think I'm going to cut it into two short ones. And I'm going to put a regular chain hook end on one end. And I'm going to put some of these big mouths. I wanted the big mouths without these little, I don't like these little clips. And I may take them off. But I'm trying to figure out how to fasten it. I think I'll use, I think I'll use these if I can get them through the chain. These little horseshoes. Put them on there. I got these just in case, but I don't think these be stout enough. I think I'd rather use these big horseshoes. And I got some smaller horseshoes too. I got some smaller hooks because I got a smaller chain in there. I'm gonna cut it up too. It's like a 30 foot chain. I'm gonna cut it up. I think it's quarter inch. And put me some hooks on it so I can have two smaller chains for hooking, putting on my boom and stuff for dragging things. But I just need to be versed. I've only got two chains to boom my machine down with. I'd like to have at least four, so I'll cut this into two and I'll give me four chains. I picked all this stuff up. It's only like grade 43, grade 30. That doesn't even have a grade. It's, but it'll do for lifting my buckets off the bed of the truck. I don't know what grade this is. No lifting and hoisting, so it ain't much. <laughs> Nah, flea market stuff, It's you didn't expect much. That's grade 30. But for lifting that 300 pound bucket, it probably won't be no big deal. These are plenty heavy enough. Well, shouldn't be a problem. I'll get back when we cut this up. I also needed one of these for my safety on my bobcat. It did have this big bolt in it. And when you raise this boom up, you want to lock this safety down. And it had a bolt through this part here. And it's hard to get that bolt on and off. It's like a lock nut or something. So I wanted one of these, and this fit perfectly. So I can unclip it when I want to raise it up. And then when I want to secure it, I can just push this pin right back through and clip it in. And that would help me a whole lot. I think it'll go through that. May not even go through that part up there. I may end up having to use a boat. I ain't thought that far ahead yet, but I can't move it right now while I ain't got no cylinders on here. So I'll check it when I get ready to bring it down. See if it still works. We got that. Ooh, it's hot. Got that link. Split this chain in two with the cutoff wheel. It didn't take me long to look at that piece. I got one of these hooks on here already. Oh, we got it else this one on here. I want to do with the pin. That's laying here somewhere. Now I've got the ends on there. I got two six foot chains. One for hooking the chain and one is a big mouth for hooking to the slots on my bucket so I can lift my buckets up and load them on my trailer. So uh, I couldn't use these big ones, these horseshoes, they wouldn't go through the, the side, wouldn't go through the side here. 
So uh, I use these smaller ones, they'll be just fine. We're not gonna get a lot of, we're not gonna be chaining down with this stuff. I'm thinking next thing I'm gonna do is uh let me get this stuff off. I got this stuff. Evaporust. And I like it. I've used it on all kinds of stuff. And it works really well. I'm going not going to put the hooks down in there. I, I think it, I'm afraid it might affect the galvanize and the coating on these hooks. So I'm just going to do the chain. I'm going to do one at a time. Let them sit a few hours. They'll turn black. And I may even spray some primer and some paint on them and put them a bright color. Because I can't stand dark chains. I like to be able to find them. If you lay them in the grass, you'll never find them. And I've been seeing green ones and bright yellow ones out there, so I'll probably paint them some kind of bright color. It doesn't hurt to paint them. They don't get that sticky. People think that they'll stick. These, these big old chain links ain't going to stick together, so it's not going to be that big of a deal. I don't know what the DOT will think about it, but I, like I said, I'm not going to be using these as tie-down chains. I'm going to brown them a bright color so I'll know that they're just for moving little things around. Get this filled up and we'll take a look at it. Got some in there. Let it set for a while. It don't have to set overnight. It just has to set a few hours. And this is Evaporus. It's it's safe. It's supposed to be safe. You should be able to like, pour it out and flush it right, right down the drain. I don't know what it's made out of. But it's safe, effective, environmentally friendly, and economical. But uh, I've never found anything else like it. I've tried some other... Uh, rust removers and, and I like this stuff just fine it seems to do what it said it's going to do I got these in the mail today and I was planning on doing all my seals on my cylinders if you've not seen these these are for folding your inner seals up for like your land nut or your piston in your cylinders you can fold those seals up with this make it into a little figure eight then you drop it down inside of the cylinder and you pop it back open I got three different sizes I got a small and I think this is a medium and you got a large for bigger seals and I, I don't know of any other use for these other than just rolling those seals I thought about trying to make one but it's so simple and so cheap I just bought them and I may still try to put those if I get if I, I'll just try to crack each nut loose on each cylinder if I can't crack the nuts loose I'll take them to the hydraulic shop I paid eighty dollars for those Bobcat seals it's almost a hundred bucks with tax and everything. Ninety one dollars, ninety five, something like that. And the hydraulic shop said he puts the same seals in it, rebuilds the cylinder, repacks it, puts it back together for a hundred and forty. So if I'd known that I never would have went I was in Lexington yesterday, which is a hundred and twenty miles from here. I never would have drove hundred and twenty miles, which I was already there, but and picked up the parts had I known that he could get the same parts and do it all for almost the same money. You live and you learn. Plus, I'm going to have a big nasty four-inch scar across my forehead from trying to get those that gland nut off. So it's a dumb mistake, but, you know, it's worth, I guess it's a learning experience. It wasn't necessarily worth it, but, oh well, you do what you do. I'll take a look at this stuff later on, and we'll see what it looks like before we paint it. Check this out. It's already back down to shiny metal again. It's only been here about 30 minutes. But it's eating every bit of this rust off. These are really old chains. They don't even have gratings on them. But it's really cool. It's hard to see. But it's taking every bit of the rust off. Another hour or so, this will be ready to rinse off. And I've got that one ready. I found this one a while ago. <clears throat> this is when some of our old stuff. I'm just trying to give use to some of this stuff that's been laying around. Look at these chain links, how beat they are. This chain is old. But we're going to clean it up, make it look like new. It's just going to be bent. And I end up putting a 5 16 hook on it. I had this toe strap that was broken. I had to cut the end off of it here. And I think I'm just going to use it with that big mouth on my ratchet strap. I took the other end of it and put on this chain so I'd have another big mouth. I like this is the kind I was looking for yesterday, these kind of hooks. I had to put one of these crazy horseshoes on there, but 
we're just going to be doing light work with this. It'll be fine. You can tie down with these chains. These grade 30 chains, you can tie down with them. It doesn't hurt anything. I don't think you're required to have 70 or 80 chains. 70 and 80 chains are just for like overhead lifting. But I think you can tie down log trucks and stuff use these chains. But look at that. That thing is just beat. It looks to... This is probably been a skitter chain or something that's that's had log boomers put on it and then boomers really mashes those chains down that's wild but uh, this is about a 10 foot chain so we have a 10 foot chain and two probably I think these are about 8 foot and once I get them cleaned up we'll come back and take a look at them I'm also going to lube some of the parts on this truck on this trailer I mean I got some of this white lithium Stay down in there the ball down in this handle it's been raining non-stop here then I got my boomers here but they kind of get sticky Be a little greasy, but we get greasy when we pull this stuff anyway. Here's the chains we've been tying down with. I believe these are 80 chains because they're bright, the bright color, it's still storming out here. I don't see the grade mark on it, it just says 4,700 pound, which is plenty. My machine weighs it's probably about 8,000 pound, I got two of these. This one's not a bright chain up here, but it's a big one. This is a 3 8 chain up here. Can't read it, just says forged high test. This is a high test chain, so this is probably an 80 or a 70, probably a 70. But this is plenty big enough, it's a 3 8 chain, so. Actually, I think I've got a 3-8 hook in here that I can put on this instead of this stinking horseshoe. Let's see what I've got. Here's the first piece of chain out of the bath. And I've got a, some primer on it. We call rusty metal primer to keep the... You can see markings on the chain now. It says G4. Surely it's not grade 4 chain. It's got to be stronger than that. Maybe grade 40 or something. Looks pretty good. I hung it up on the boom and sprayed it. Maybe yeah, that's just G4. It don't say 64. But you can see it well, once all the metal the rust is gone, you see all the welds. There's no crushed links. This is a really good chain. Even though it was old and rusty and discarded. I put some new ends on it, a little bit of spray paint and some chemical dip and this is just like new again. I'll be using this chain as my lift chains. They'll be hanging off that boom just like that so I can lift my buckets on and off the trailer while I, when I have my backhoe with me because I have to load it with the backhoe on it then I have to unload my buckets with the chain. It makes my job just a little bit easier and Tyler's job just a little bit easier and Matt's should work I forgot to show it when I first pulled it out was rinsing it off it was just raw metal I'll try to when I do the next one I'll try to do it this has only been in there for a couple of hours it eat everything off of it doesn't it I don't think it affects the integrity of the chain it's not an acid it's just a natural solution I don't know what's made of it works really good primers up good too 
I was going to paint it red. I don't know. I got some hammer tone paint. I might try that. I like to have it a bright color. That way when it's dropped in the grass, it'll show. We'll see what we can come up with. Here's a piece of chain right out of the chemical bath. There is no rust at all. I dried it with a torch just to get all the water off of it before it did flash rust. A little bit of rust right here. I don't know if that's flash rust or what it is, but it's just in one spot. Maybe it's where the chain was coiled up. But I want to hit it with some gray primer. I just want to show how good that stuff does. It's amazing. These are old chains and there is no rust at all left on these. This has been in there overnight. It really didn't make much difference overnight as it did for a couple of hours. But I'll get it painted up. Well, I still haven't got my hydraulic cylinders back from the hydraulic shop. This video was supposed to be about hydraulic, but it wound up being about chains. And I've got a couple of my old chains restored. I used that hammer tone spray paint. Let's see if I can find it. I don't know what I'm doing it. It's Rust Oleum Hammer Tone spray paint. It makes it look like old hammered iron. I know you ain't supposed to paint chains, but uh, I think it looks pretty good. I'm not going to use these for tie downs anyway. And here's one of the oldest chains I found. We soaked it for 24 hours, and the rust only come off of two links. Strange. I mean, it must have been just really on there. But I want to dry this up with a torch and get all the water off of it and give it a good good coating of paint. We'll just throw it around in a truck for an accessory chain. We won't use it for pulling or we might do a little lifting with it. You can tell it's really old because look how mangled the links are. That's pretty cool. It doesn't have any markings on it that I can tell. But it's a I thought it was an old forge chain but it's a modern chain. It's just old worn out. But uh, that's enough talking about change. I've done a little bit of painting on the front of the bobcat. My mounts for my backhoe attachment. Which is back here. That's the backhoe that goes on it. They were all rusty and corroded, so I cleaned them up and put a little bit of bobcat white spray paint on it. To me, it doesn't match, but the machine's pretty old and got grease all over it. I got a can of gray and a can of black. I think I'm going to paint that bottom gray. I believe that's what color it's supposed to be. Try to keep it off the tars and stuff. I'm not going to restore this thing. I'm just trying to get the... This was all rusty where that cylinder comes down, rubs against it. The reason it rubs is the bushings that goes on these big control arms, lift arms, are shot. It should have shims in it, and I think they're just completely worn out. But that's going to be our next project. We'll tackle that in the wintertime sometime. But that's all I got for you guys. I just wanted you to see these. How neat these chains turned out after soaking them in that rust remover. But uh, thank you guys for hanging out with me for a few minutes. Stop by next time. We'll do something different. Hopefully we'll do some hydraulic stuff when we get the hydraulic cylinders back. And thanks for watching and please subscribe. Stay clean everybody.